This past weekend, I went to my very first Dondia. And while I was there, I conquered a lifelong fear of mine, dancing in public. Part of the reason that I've always been afraid to dance in public is because the religion that I grew up in frowned upon it. Well, little did I know that at Dondia, I would get my groove back. But first, I had to actually show up at Dondia at the right place and the right time. This temple is really hard to find, y'all. I actually got off on the wrong bus stop and now I'm, I'm having to walk to it. I am here. The temple is there. Let's see if I can find it. I thought Dondia was the name of the festival, but little did I know is actually a traditional dance from the state of Gujarat. Over the years, it's been paired with a festival called Nathratri, which celebrates the triumph of good over evil. Eventually, I worked up my nerve to go into the temple and people were dressed in unbelievably beautiful saris and kurtas. And it was a spectacle to behold. I was really overwhelmed at seeing all of the colorful flowing garments floating in the air, somehow defying gravity while everyone danced in a circle. Now, in my childhood religion, the idea of dancing in a temple would have made heads roll, but not so at Dundee. In one part of the temple, people were dancing and there was definitely loud music, and right beside them were people praying to the gods and receiving blessings from the priest. Now, throughout most of Dandia, I was a bit of a wildflower standing on the sidelines and just watching the beautiful dancing. But then, two guys about my age came up to me and they weren't going to have any of that. They decided that Patrick needed to dance Dandia. So they got on each side of me, they grabbed my hand, they bobbed their head, said, come on, men and they dragged me out onto the dance floor. This is Jay, and he told me the Dandaya dance. Let's see if I learned it right. Let's go. Now, in my first trip around the Dandaya circle, I absolutely bombed. I was nervous, and I did not want to be doing it, and I had no idea what the dance was. But finally, for the end of my first trip around the circle, a woman looked at me and very strictly said, one, two, three, four. And I finally understood that on the count of one, you hit your stick on the left, on the count of two, you hit your stick to the right. The count of three, you pull back. The count of four, you hit it again, and then you turn around. And so on my second trip, I started to really enjoy myself. As we were dancing, I shouted over the music to one of my new friends, what are these sticks about and what does this dance mean? And he said, no, 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 man, don't think about it. It doesn't mean anything, just dance. And that reminded me that sometimes the quickest way to finding meaning in life is just by moving your body and working up a sweat and not worrying about what it all means, but just fully being human. Just as I was getting used to my new role in life as Patrick the Bollywood dancer, the music stopped and we had a punjar, which is a prayer service. I was a little disappointed because I wanted to keep dancing, but then I realized that food was awaiting after the punjar. We had the most delicious chickpea curry, buttermilk yogurt, and all. Yum! My experience of facing my fear of dancing at Dandia reminded me of something that the psychologist Carl Jung once said that there is no coming to greater consciousness without first encountering fear. For example, when I was 18, I left my small hometown of 2,000 people in order to go out into the world and attend university, and it was really scary for me. But at the same time, as I moved through the fear, I got to meet all sorts of interesting people, some of who are still friends to this day, and they shared the same passion for music and the arts that I had at the time. When I moved to Leipzig, Germany back in 2015, I was so afraid of being in a new culture where I didn't speak the language that I was nauseous and I drank nothing but orange juice for three days. But the six months that I lived in Germany allowed me to cross so many special moments off of my bucket list and really expanded my horizons of what it means to be human and the possibilities of what I can be and do in this life. And when I danced in public at Dondia this past weekend, I felt so self-conscious and fearful and yet I had some fun-loving guys that pushed me out onto the dance floor and forced me to face my fears. And facing my fears has allowed me to be more comfortable in my skin and at home in my body now. And I think it helped me become a little bit more of who I truly am. So with all that being said, I have a question for you. What fear do you need to face in order to grow into a greater level of consciousness? Maybe you can't think of it right now on the spot, but perhaps an interesting opportunity will reveal itself to you in the coming days just like Dondia did for me and dancing this past weekend. And if Dondia is part of Navatri, which is all about the triumph of good over evil, 
then that's exactly what happened in my inner world when facing my fear of dancing allowed freedom to triumph over fear. I'm so glad that I got to experience Sandia this year, and I can't wait until next year where hopefully I'll be able to attend the really big festival in Oslo that has more than 2,000 people. What's your favorite part of Dundia and how did you celebrate it this year? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, I wish you nothing but the best in your life's journey to becoming all that you truly are.